Welcome everyone to the Open Day Law Panel. I'm Cody and we're going to run through some frequently asked questions about studying law. We'll give you an idea of what your study options are available to you and also talk about what a career in this field might look like once you graduate. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge we are on the lands of the Bunjalong Nation today and pay my respects to elders past, emerging and present. Today I am joined by student Zach, alumni Hannah Roach and lecturer Dr. Tom Round. Hi everyone, can I please ask you guys to tell us a little bit about yourselves and what brought you here today? In any order. <laughs> yeah, so I'm studying a double degree, a Bachelor of Laws and a Bachelor of Business. Um, it's a five year degree, it's now it's a four year degree, um, but I'm in my fourth year and I'm also working as a student ambassador. I'm an alumni, as already said. Um, I graduated about a couple of years ago, 2020. I then went on to do my graduate diploma in legal practice and I'm now working as a lawyer in a local firm in Burley in property and commercial. I'm a, a lecturer in the law uh, discipline. I've been at Southern Cross since 2004, so 18 years. And um, yeah. Now Tom, the faculty offers both undergraduate and postgraduate courses. Could you quickly run through what the studies that are available, including the postgrad options? All right, well particularly uh, in the undergrad area, we have a paralegal stream, which is a bit more practical, and then the actual LLB law degree, which is what people traditionally mean. Um, postgrad area, we offer a Masters of Laws, including Business Law, and a Master of Business Law. And there's also the option of doing honours within your LLB, although technically it's not quite postgraduate, quote unquote, because you do it before you graduate. Anyway, deal with that when the time comes. And uh, we um, have also supervised students doing PhDs within law. Research. Okay. And Isaac, you're currently studying a double degree. What does that look like and why did you choose to do both these fields? Yeah, so at the moment, it looks like essentially not a whole lot different for if I were to just choose a straight bachelor's. It's still the same amount of workload, um, but I find myself managing the law and the business uh, quite well because they sort of feed off each other very nicely. Um, and I always wanted to do that ever since I was in sort of grade 10, even year nine. Um, I thought they were very comparable in degrees and I thought I'd loved um, to eventually one day go into the law sector and I thought to have a business knowledge with that. Um, would feed itself very nicely. Yeah. yeah. And Hannah, obviously you're a successful graduate. You're, in your, obviously, in your field, and that's the whole point, I guess, why we study anything is to gain that career opportunity. What did your university experience look like? like? Why was Southern Cross the right decision for you? So for me, it was a lot of um, reasons why I chose Southern Cross. I think initially um, it was convenience and location because I actually started off in Lismore at the Lismore campus So I used to live in Ballina and then I decided to move up to Corumban because I wanted to broaden I guess my horizons a little bit So then I moved on to the Gold Coast campus and that was just a seamless transfer as well between campuses Which was really great and initially too I'd started off in social science um, so then it also allowed me the chance to combine those degrees which is what I tried initially, but then just focused on law after that. So I liked the flexibility that Southern Cross offered in degrees. And obviously, so you were studying a course previously. Did a lot of those subjects transfer over into what you'd call elective units of your law degree or did you receive any credit? I did. I received some credit for that. And I also graduated with a graduate diploma in social science. So I've got that on top of my law degree. Um, and it's just, it's good to have that background as well. Like that's, uh, I think that's where I decided I wanted to go into law by studying something else initially. And then it sort of, it helped me redirect as well. And I've still got that qualification too. Yeah, I guess all those experiences do kind of help you finesse and point you in the right direction by the end of it. And that is something interesting about law degrees is that I, I believe you can have some internships and hands-on learning experiences as well. Tom, can you tell us about what that looks like? Is there opportunities like that in the law degree? There are indeed, yeah. We have two elective units, one for law, law degree students, LOB students, and one for the paralegals, uh, law placement and paralegal placement. We work very closely with the local profession, both up here and in Lismore Northern Rivers. And in fact, um, Hannah is one of many, many familiar names that I see uh, often, often in advertisements for local firms and think, oh, I taught that person. <laughs> so uh, we certainly have a lot of uh, um, scope there for, for making that contact while doing your degree. And, um, and obviously it counts as two subjects in total, doesn't it? 
well, well, separate subject for each stream. We have the paralegal and the legal, but yeah, it's it's a subject that instead of doing an exam and an assignment, you're out there, you know, working as a a taste of being a trainee solicitor or what used to be called an article clerk back in the old days. And Hannah or Isaac, did you guys take any of these hands-on learning opportunities as of yet? At the moment, um, I haven't. I'm just uh, finishing my core units, um, but I will definitely um, be taking that opportunity next year. So I didn't do, I think you're referring to the placement elective. Yeah, so I haven't actually done that elective through Southern Cross, but they do have um, connections with community legal centres that I ended up getting experience through. So that was my voluntary um, experience with Southern Cross. So I think I did that for about a term, which would have been probably three months or so, I think. Um, and that was just in Rabina. Okay, and did that internship experience or that volunteering experience, did that tell you exactly what type of law you wanted to do? Or did that kind of say, oh, you know what, this is interesting. However, it also helped you focus on moving somewhere into a separate area. I think it was really good introductory um, exposure because um, it was a lot of different areas. And obviously for a community legal centre as well, you're helping people um, a lot of pro bono work generally. So that people are coming in with everyday real life um, issues that they're, they're like, hey, I need help for this. You know, how are you going to help me? And then they come in, we can offer like free 30 minute advice, obviously not as a student, but the lawyers that are there can offer the free advice. Um, and you do get exposure to that. I think it didn't so much lead me to where I wanted to go in law, but I actually met one of my colleagues um, who, I, I'm, like, who I was working with in this firm that I'm, at, that I'm at now. So she was a lawyer at the firm that I ended up doing my placement with and so on. So it's a good networking thing as well. Yeah, and, and some say those are the uh, one of the most important tools, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know sometimes. And networking in any industry is so important in creating those relationships because you never know what positions your colleagues or friends in the same fields might end up. Uh, and th that's really awesome that you were able to create that relationship and find, I guess, a future opportunity out of it. Um, now, I can see there's a lot of high school students in the audience. And, and a common question that we see quite a lot is, do I need to do like a specialization in my law degree to be a criminal lawyer or to go in into mental health or to go into prisons? Or do you study literally just the bachelors of laws and you get out there in the workforce, upskill yourself and then further study down, down I guess, the pipeline? More the second option. Um, we have the, a basic set of fields of legal knowledge, which we call them the priestly 11, not because there's altars and sacrifices, but because it was a judge called Justice Priestley with an EY who chaired a committee who said, this is what every law graduate needs to know. Um, you do all of that in your degree, criminal, contract law, corporations, constitutional, they don't all start with C, but you get the idea, torts law. Um, that's the basic core. And then we also offer electives within the law degree. Um, under our former, former degree until a couple of years ago, it was four years for a basic law degree. And there was room to do, say, politics or psychology. Uh, we've reduced the basic law degree to three years because there's a lot of demand for students to complete. And within that, it only allows for law electives, which is still a pretty wide menu, although we also have combined degrees, you know, psychology, law, etc. Um, once you're out in the workforce, you may, you'll probably find in your first year that apart from making the coffee and doing the photocopy, you uh, cover a lot of different areas, but most firms will specialise, say, family law, um, environmental law. Um, if you particularly want to specialise in something that's not one of the priestly 11, such as, um, say, environmental law or human rights law, we have electives for that, or you might want to do some postgrad in it as a result. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point to raise, is that we are one of the first universities in the public sector to really do a three-year professional qualifying law degree. So what that means, it gives you the opportunity to get out into the workforce faster, you know, start, I guess, earning, um, I guess, an income, as well as getting that hands-on learning experience and having a real taste test of what the industry is offer. Or someone like Isaac, who decided to do a double degree and really buddy it up with an industry that he's passionate about and utilize business and law together and do it over technically a shorter amount of time compared to traditional other traditional universities. So there is the opportunity to, you know, take both options for you depending on what your goals are or start off doing straight three-year bachelor's of laws and if you get near the end and you are really wanting to pursue going down a certain industry, you can do further study and, and add that a second degree closer to the end of your degree. That is always an option for you here at Southern Cross. Now, we've learned about, about our degrees, I guess the pathways and I guess some of the outcomes, but 
what happens to our students once they graduate? What sort of fields are they going in? Now, I would love to hear from you, but first these guys, Hannah, what is your job looking like now since you've graduated? So I'm in property and commercial, as I've already said. Um, initially, it probably, I think in every firm, like what Tom mentioned, you sort of start at the bottom, essentially, um, and you do work your way up. It's just, uh, it's how it is. Um, so there was a lot of initially administrative reception, um, legal admin, things like that initially. And now since I've become a lawyer, um, I'm starting to manage my own matters. So it'd be... Um, obviously property and commercial, so it's residential, commercial, off the plan transactions, commercial leasing, a lot of those sorts of things, business sales, um, it's all in that area predominantly at the moment. And obviously you finished off your degree here on the Gold Coast and you gained employment locally. All right, and Isaac, what about yourself? What's your plan? Yeah, so at the moment, I mean, I came into the degree thinking um, I wanted to work within the business sector and I thought that it would be very handy just to have a law degree to my name. Um, and that is still in the back of my mind. But I mean, I've been doing a lot of these elective units, um, like Tom there's mentioned, for instance, I just did environmental law, I've done employment and industrial relations law. And I probably think I may end up in that sort of sector at the moment. Um, I'm working a little bit in that sector around the unfair dismissals um, side of things at the moment. But yeah, probably heading down to towards the employment um, industrial relations law at the moment. And so you're already working in the industry? Yeah, so doing a little bit of that, it's sort of the closest to being a lawyer that I can without actually being a lawyer. Um, so representing people at the Fair Work Commission. Um, so that's taking up a lot of my time at the moment whilst obviously still completing um, full units as the double degree. Tom, what are our other graduates going on to do? Well, uh, interestingly, I need just two days ago, I was reading ABC News website and there was an article about um, allegations of uh, misconduct in the Queensland Public Trustee's Office. And one of the solicitors they quoted was in fact one of our own graduates from about uh, 14, 15 years ago. Um, the two state MPs on both sides of the border, Laura Gerber in Queensland, uh, Karamundi and uh, Tam Tamara Smith for Ballina are both graduates of our law school. So. We've got our levers to power there, one Liberal and one, la one Green, so we need to find a Labor one somewhere. Uh, so our graduates do, do go on to quite great things. We've got a couple who've gotten into Oxford on scholarships. Um, one who I believe works for the UN in Switzerland and a lot who are in the local, the local profession, both sides of the border. Yeah, I actually met a couple of graduates not too long ago and they had a passion for the creative industries and they've gone into like copyright, a lot of copyright law and looking after a lot of musicians and management structures. That's, that's a rich area of copyright law. If you all remember men at work getting sued over uh, land down under using kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. You know, they used that for 30 years and nobody noticed until it came up on Spicks and Specks and then they got sued. Oh. So <laughs> always work for lawyers. You're never out of a job. I'm going to go throw out one last question before I'd love to learn more from the audience is if there is any advice, and I'd love to start with you, Hannah, if there's any advice that you'd pass to a student starting out in law or maybe someone here who's maybe a little bit lost on where they want to go with law, do you have any advice what you'd pass on from where you started from? Um, I'd probably say at least for your first year, try not to be too hard on yourself for one thing. Um, you're adjusting to university. So either, you know, if you are a high school student, it's going to be a lot different to high school for one thing. Um, if you're a mature age student, it's, you know, you've probably been out of study for a while. So that's also going to be an adjustment. But with regards to um, where you're wanting to take law, try and get that practical experience in as soon as you feel confident to, um, you know, balance that with your studies as well. Because... You, you're going to need that practical experience. It's a massive step up even from university when you graduate to getting into that into the workforce. It's a really big step up. So I think the more experience you can get while you are at uni, even if it is just voluntary, volunteering at a local law firm, um, like what Isaac's doing as well, that's really great that he's already getting that exposure and experience to be able to see this is something that I'm interested in, this is what's you know, it's relevant to what I'm studying both degrees. So I think experience and take it easy on yourself um, that first year at least. Do your best. 
And you ra- you raise a really important point about if you are a mature age student. And in the audience here, if you are a mature age student and you're thinking, yeah, I want to go to university. However, it's been such a long time. Where do I start? If you are worried about that little bit of exp- lack of experience, especially studying, you know, it's a bit of a habitual thing. You have to get, I guess, in the rhythm of it. We have a fantastic bridging program. It's called Preparing for Success. And it's a six, well, it's a 12-week fee-free bridging program designed for any Commonwealth-supported student. So it doesn't matter how long you've, it's been since you've studied. It's going to upskill you in academic writing, literacy, and numeracy support. And on the basis of completing our PSP program, you get direct entry into our law degree and almost any other degree that we offer at our university. So if you have a friend or a family member or even a sibling that might be in the same scenario and wants to change careers, but it's been such a long time and they don't know where to begin, highly recommend talking about the PSP program. It is valuable. It's won so many awards. In fact, so many of our fellow institutions actually list it as a bridging pathway into their courses as well, which is something we probably shouldn't raise too much. Um, now, last one, I just want to ask you, Isaac, is there any advice that you would pass on to any future students looking at studying with us? Yeah, definitely. So I would sort of feed off the back of what Hannah was saying and say, understand that, yes, there will be your core units, there will be those priestly 11, but there's so much more within the degree itself. Um, and then off the back of that, I would say that choose something that you probably didn't think you would find a whole lot of interest into. For instance, I went into environmental law wanting to do it, but not really thinking I would find that much interest in it, but came out the back of environmental law and, and really enjoying it. So yeah, know that there's a whole lot more than just the core units. Um, and then when you can have the option, um, you know, later down your career path, um, choose as many of those elective units as you can. Yeah. And you know what, at university, th- there will be always a handful of subjects that you won't love. You know, they're a part of the industry. You have to understand them. For me, I'm a past business student here from Southern Cross and I did uh, these three units, economics, accounting and statistics. And they were, you know, I'm a marketing creative student. I was definitely not someone who went down that route, but uh, those skills actually gave me the most amount of valuable life skills that I really needed, especially economics and accounting. Um, And I was, my rule was like, I did not want to fail these. So I studied them twice as much compared to any other unit. And I still use those units every single day in my life. So you never know what you're going to get out of them. If they are a unit that you are uninterested, my number one advice would be uh, study them twice as hard because you never want to do them again, especially if you obviously don't pass it. And that means you have to repeat. It's the worst way to get <laughs> worst way to get into that situation. Um, but that would be my little bit of life advice. I'm only 28. I've only been out of school for 10 years, but that's all I've got to really pass on. Um, and thank you so much, panelists, for joining us today. I really want to throw out some time. We've got five minutes left that we would love to bring out to the audience. Is there anything you guys would like to know from our panelists or about the law courses that we have available? Yeah, Tom, would you like to answer that one and maybe Isaac yourself? Um, Human rights law, international law, international business law, local government and town planning law. It might sound, no, don't go off to sleep because it is actually quite interesting about <laughs> demolishing old buildings, that kind of thing. It's, it's, I find it interesting anyway. Um, In the past, before COVID hit, we had some uh, very, very colourful electives because we had people flying in from overseas. That's been shelved at the moment just because of of COVID, et cetera. But uh, we are looking at things like, what was the best one? I think it'd be a tie between the jurisprudence of Game of Thrones and the jurisprudence of The Walking Dead, I think. Uh, You may not immediately be using that out in the office. Hannah, you haven't had to deal with any zombies. Not really. uh, Yeah, so some of the electives are kind of bread and butter a little bit specialised and others are kind of more um, the interesting stuff. When do you guys start doing electives? More traditionally at the end of your degree or...? More traditionally, yeah, I would say so. But even um, with, like, whether they, they're classed as electives or not, I mean, I'm doing, like, professional conduct at the moment. I'm doing administrative law as well. And, and to me, they are more... Um, in my mind, more like an elective unit too. They're sort of different to my common conception of what a law degree would have been anyway. Um, But then, like I sort of prefaced before as well, the environmental law um, and then employment and industrial relations law are sort of two separate ends of the the spectrum of what you can choose and they've been my most enjoyable. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Um, Something quite unique, we have a brand new learning model, which has actually opened up the capabilities of our cohort sizes as well, because we have a lot more flexibility in our teaching. Uh, Tom, do you have any further comment on that sort of topic? Well, pretty much every year I've been here, I teach a couple of core units. They almost always have exactly 100 students, 97, 103, so it's about that for the core units. Um, Tutorial sizes, we offer them, uh, of course, here on campus uh, and in cyberspace. On campus, um, between 5 and 15... In cyberspace, usually 20 to 30. 
Um, the previous session, somebody asked about uh, teaching under COVID, and we actually hit the ground running very easily because we were so used to distance learning. Uh, my son was at a Sandstone University where they honestly didn't know what to do. And I said, oh, we're just telling all the Gold Coast campus to just go to the online class instead. We'll do it online. So. And that's a really great point to raise. If you are an on-campus student and you do miss some of your face-to-face -face learnings, you can jump into the online collaborates as if an online student was there because that's all available to you, a part of your unit, inf uh, unit information assessments. So you can treat it as an online student or an on-campus student. Both facilities are access to you. Even if you're an online student, you can still use our Gold Coast campus as your place of learning if you're wanting to separate your home life and uni life, or if you're just wanting somewhere to study, especially to get some of those assessments done. So that's a really good point to raise. And um, it's something, especially with uh, when COVID did hit, uh, hit the ground running, you know, a lot of our faculties, uh, since we have been doing online for so long, were able to adapt quite quickly due to the amount of experience that we had, which was, you know, the ideal was when things got quiet, we could actually get our studies done, which is, which is not a bad place to be. Yeah, I think I would say I'm a good example of that as well. I started out being um, completely on campus here and then I would say second or third year in, um, I've sort of progressed and I'm doing it all online at the moment. And that's not to say I'll continue doing it all online. I just say flexibility wise, managing training and also with my work commitments, um, it's just been a thousand times easier. Um, but whether or not that changes into the future, I'll sort of just match it to however my situation is at the time. Yeah, and I think that's the most important point to raise is that university isn't a one-year decision. You know, you'd be studying three, four, six years. You know, Isaac's coming up to his fifth year that I'm aware of. Um, is that you need a... The great thing about Southern Cross, and I can really vouch for this in my own personal life, is that the university really can change with you. You know, it might be fantastic when you're on campus Monday to Friday for your first year, just like Isaac was. But, you know, you may take on extra commitments outside of university. You may have a part-time job. You may move out of home, which requires you to do extra, you know, life commitments. That the university can really be flexible with you as your lifestyle changes. So you may be an on-campus student, but you may trend to do a hybrid of being on campus and online. And then maybe sometimes you might move away and be required to be away for a certain period of time. And you, you're like, you know what? I still want to get this course done. I'm going to study this complete, this complete semester online if you wish. And you can mix and pick and choose every single semester wherever you like, even in between our campuses if you live between them as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you answered, if you have any unanswered questions or you'd like to find ways to apply, um, the next intake is coming up in term five at the end of this year. Alternatively, if you wish to study with us next year, if you are a school leaver, you can apply through our early entry program. If you're a mature age student, please come talk to us today. We can t show you how to apply. It's a fee-free application. You don't need to go through QTAC or UAC, and it's as easy as that. If you'd like to give us a call to our future students team, you can call us on 1-800-626-481, or you can email us at futurestudents at seu.edu.au. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to talk any more one-on-one -on -one with our panelists and our client services team member who is here today, you can meet them just at the front of the lecture theater. They'll be more than happy to stick around for an extra 10, 15 minutes and discuss your one-on-one -on -one situations. Thank you again.